Hey guys, this might be the second video for tonight. Um, a lot of you guys have asked how to use RetroTink 2X with the OSSC and use it as a front end to um, input S video or composite sources. Now, up to now, we've been using mostly um, HDMI to VGA converters, but the problem is you have um, video artifacts because the VGA input of the OSSC doesn't have a low pass filter. I found a better way to do so. So here we have the RetroTink 2X. I'm just going to make sure it's in pass-through mode because I found that it, I get the best image quality if the RetroTINK 2X is merely transcoding and feeding 240p signals to the OSSC and not 480p. Um, since I'm using a Nintendo, I'm going to make sure it's in composite input mode, like so. Um, the RetroTINK is connected to the Nintendo's composite video output. The audio output of the Nintendo is going directly to the OSSC's audio input. So we're not using the 2X to capture audio at all. Now, the RetroTINK 2X is outputting the 240p transcoded video via HDMI to this Chinese um, knockoff $12 HDMI to component video converter. Sounds terrible, but this thing actually works really well. It, um, I was surprised. Definitely didn't have any uh, issues with compatibility or image quality. From here on, the, uh, this converter takes the HDMI output from the RetroTINK back to an analog signal um, component analog video into the OSSC. Now, there's a few important settings that you really have to remember. Just go through them. First of all, um, you have to make sure it's in generic. Uh, right now I'm running line 5x, doesn't matter which mode you're, uh, you're using, use generic, not the console specific mode. Um, the other thing that you have to be, you have to watch out for is you have to set the low pass filter to nine megahertz, standard definition TV. Otherwise you'll have these weir this uh, weird shimmering uh, artifact on pixel edge boundaries, which we saw in the, um, in, in the, uh, with, the, with the VGA converter. The OSSC here is outputting to my data path uh, Vision E1 card. Um, thank you very much, Bob. And uh, let's see how everything looks. Okay, loading up Dracula's Curse. One thing that's really odd with the capture card is that there's this vertical pixel shift here and there. Um, you'll see later on that it doesn't really show up in an actual display, but for some reason I can't get this to work well with capture cards. Okay, I've turned on scanline generator. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, it may look really weird because um, YouTube's 1080p is probably downsampling the full vertical resolution of Line 5x, which is running at 12, 1200p. And here's the output directly on a display. Looks really, really nice. Um, my computer monitor right now, but I guarantee you it looks so much better on a 60 inch OLED. I really don't know what's up with the capture cards, both the data path and the Elgato seem to have that weird pixel sh uh, shift shimmering artifact, but at least on a real display, um, all the ones I've tried, there's no problem. Okay, hope you guys enjoy this video.